Hello, welcome everyone. I'm glad you were able to stop by. I'm Diane, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I love working with the Stampin' Up! products to do my cards and paper crafts. So I'm here today to show you another nice, beautiful card. I actually was inspired by Jennifer Kirk, and I made the card, and let me show it to you right here. I made this yesterday so we're going to put this together today okay and we're going to talk about the quite curvy uh, stamp set and dies and I'm using also the Dragonfly Garden stamp set again and the punch. I don't know if you could see that punch. Oh the lighting's bad. Okay it's right there. And then I'm also using the subtle embossing folder. Okay, so in the catalog, I'm going to show you where you can find that stuff. Now this one, the subtle embossing folder, that is in the main catalog, okay, our big annual catalog. And then the other products are in our mini catalog. So we're going to be using the quite curvy stamp set and the curvy dies. And if you buy them together as a bundle, you get 10% off, and they're $41.25. So remember, celebration is going on. So if you spend at least $50, you get a free product from this catalog, okay? And my host code is right here. If you use that host code, I would appreciate it very much, and I will send you a thank you card. Um, we're also using the Dragonfly's Punch and the Dragonfly Garden stamp set. And again, if you buy that as a bundle, you get 10% off and it would come to $36.75. So that's where those are in the mini catalog. So we're going to get started with this card, okay? It's always nice to see the products in action. So this, I have my little kit right here. So I'll put my card right over there. <clears throat> so this is Balmy Blue Cardstock. It's eight and a half by five and a half, and I scored it halfway at four and a quarter. So I'm, I uh, scored it there already. I'm just gonna give it a fold right there. And with my bone folder, I'm gonna give it a good crease, all right? Then my next piece is the Purple Posy cardstock. And this is 5 and 3 eighths inch by 4 and 1 eighth. And that is going to be our next layer. Then you will need three pieces of the white cardstock. And this measures 5 and a quarter by 4. Two of the pieces you're going to use on the front, and the one piece is going to be used on the inside. And I see I only have two pieces here. Let me grab one more piece. So I have my three pieces here now, okay? So let's get started and how I did this. So the one piece, this is your five and a quarter by four inch. It's going to end up looking like this, okay? And I'm going to show you how I got to that part. So the dies, I'm going to bring them in. These are the curvy dies, and there is ten of them. You have a leaf here. These cut out, I'll bring the stamp set in so you could see it too, because also because it coordinates with the stamp set. So when you stamp these leaves, you can cut them out with this one. And then this makes a nice border. This is a border die, and this is also a border die. Then you could um, die cut some leaves, and this one also die cuts this little flower and leaf swag and then you have the cute birds there's three different birds and of course there's three different dies for the birds 
So I used this one right here, and I'll show you how I did that. So we'll pretend this is card is not cut yet. And I did not emboss until the very end with the subtle embossing folder. So my words, you'll see, you're one in a million. That's, those are the words I used. I t and you know what? I'm going to show you that real quick. <laughs> There's a little trick to these. So this is the Stampin' Up uh, Clear Black. It's the H, and it fits perfect, um, the words right here. So let me get the your one in a million. So that's the one right here. So I'm going to peel that off, put this aside. Now there is a trick to this. Can you because you can manipulate the stamp so it doesn't have the same curve that when you took it off. So what I do is I want to line it up. Okay, I'm going to let it fall naturally. And then I pick it up with the black. Okay? And if you want to make sure, so if I put this over the words already on the stamp set, and I don't know if you could see that. I'll bring it in a little closer. So if I line it back up, I know I have the right curve, okay? It's very important when you do the leaves right here because if you get if you put this on your block and you move the curve at all, it's not going to line up with your die. So you want to mount it to your block the same way I did this. All right? So that was a little trick um, that's worth noting. <laughs> so I took my die. And I lined it up, and I took my words, and that's why I did uh, do this. And I kind of just put my stamp over there, and I said, okay, the curve is right where I want it. Because I wouldn't want it like this, because then it's not going to line up with the die. So this is how I lined up my curve. And then I used some tape. After I lined it up, I just use some painter's tape to hold it in place, and that does help. And I ran it through my machine. So now I had this piece, and now I had a regular straight edge white piece there. Let me see if I could um, get this out a little bit and focus. Okay, so now you're going to die cut a border on the bottom piece, okay? So when you're all done die cutting, you're going to be left with these two pieces. Then I took my stamp and inked it up in the gorgeous grape. And I just put it over the curve. Not too close to it because you have this whole area to stamp in. And I stamped in the gorgeous grape. Okay, now you have your two pieces here. Now I took my Suttles embossing folder, and it's so nice stamping up. They have this line here, so you could line your paper up so you know you're getting your pattern straight on your paper. So all you do is line it up like that, okay? Then close it and send it through your your cutting emboss machine. And then you end up with that. And those are nice and embossed now. Let's see if I could come in here a little. So now it's all embossed and I my embossing I do at the very end after I die cut and after I stamp. Okay? So it gives a nice texture to the paper. There a little bit now. Okay, let's see what my next step would be. Now I have the second piece of that white. So if you lay your pieces on top, because this we're going to adhere to that piece. But you see in my card, I have stamped the little dragonflies. And I am using the Balmy Blue and the Highland Heather ink pads. Okay, I'm going to get some stuff out of the way here. 
because we're going to do some stamping. Make sure that's in there. Okay. And this we don't need anymore. Put those there. Okay. So I have my sheet of paper here. I'm going to get my stamp. So we're going to use, oh, we're done with that, the curvy, quite curvy stamp set. Now I'm going to my Dragonfly Garden stamp set. And I need the little dragonflies, okay? And I'm just going to mount it right there. They look good. So I started with the darker color, Highland Heather. Open that up and just slide it. And now this is the area I want it in, okay? I don't have to stamp the whole thing. So I'm going to tap and I'm going to stamp off once and then just stamp on. Because I want a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to spread these out. I want just a little bit lighter. So I'm stamping off once. Oop, I gotta put my script paper there. Okay, that looks good. Now to test it, I'm gonna line my paper up here, my pieces that go on top. I'm gonna line them up right there. Oh, I need some more there and there. So tap, and then we want some more right there. And then, well, I'm not going to overlap them over there, so I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to put this away, the Highland Heather. And I'm going to clean my stamp off real quick. And I just use a wet paper towel. And then dry it with a dry paper towel. Just tap. Okay, now I want the balmy blue. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stamp off once, okay? So I'm going to put my scrap paper there. And then, and it's all in the camera, right? Yep. I loved the look of this. Um, it was a pretty pastel look. I don't know if you watched my video from yesterday, but I did another dragonfly card and it used the real deep, rich colors of the paper that came in that bundle. But this, I really saw it and I loved it because I do love the pastel colors. Okay, so now let's put our card together and see if we need any more stamping. That looks pretty good. I could probably have just a little right there. So let me bring my thing back in, my paper, and I think I just needed one right there. Okay, we're done with that, so I'm going to close up this stamp pad. These open and close, so nice. I love the configuration of that ink pad. Okay, now I'm gonna clean this off real quick. Because I think we're gonna use it again at the end. All right, so this is coming together nicely. So I think I'm ready to adhere it down. Let's take a nut, one more look and see if we have everything stamped to the way we want it. Yep, we sure do. So let's, ad let's adhere that down. So I used my liquid glue. So I'm gonna take this piece, use my scrap paper here, and yep, I want the word showing, right? Okay, make sure this is gonna come out. There it goes. So you know celebration is almost over. There's only really four days left after today. So if you've got your eye on any product, don't hesitate. Do it today. Order so you don't miss out on your free product. It's always so nice to get free stuff. <laughs> 
and very useful stuff. A lot of designer series paper, some stamp sets. Okay, with the liquid glue, it's nice because I can adjust it. So I think I want to just slide that down a little. I think that's good. Okay, so that piece is on. Now I'm going to put, now which way do I want it? Like this. So I'm going to flip it over. And put my glue on here. I know I did my video already this week on Monday. But, you know, this is the last week of celebration. And I thought, oh, let me go on maybe another time. And I don't know, I might come on one more time this week. We'll see. But just to show you some products that you might be interested in. And if you order them, then you'll get their free product. Here we go. Okay, give it a press. This is such a fun card to make. Okay, we have one more thing now. So I got a scrap piece of the white card stock. And I stamped the dragonfly. This one right here. And I embossed it with the silver embossing powder. So you stamp it first in Versamark ink, and then you sprinkle the silver embossing powder on it and heat it with our heat tool. All of those products we sell in our main catalog. So it gives you a raised image, glossy. It's beautiful and it's so easy to color on embossed images. You know, when I first started stamping, I don't know how many years ago it was, um, at least 20, probably more than 20 years ago. That's how I started, with embossing. I would just emboss a main feature on the card and then color it in, and it was stunning, and people loved my cards. And I sort of have gotten away from the embossing powder because now I have so many die cuts and, oh, just other products that, I don't go to this technique that often anymore, but I do love it. Okay, so these are the colors. I use two colors like I did right here. I used, this is actually the Highland Heather. Yep, I did use that. And the light balmy blue and dark balmy blue. And to tell you the truth, I use the dark balmy blue and the dark highland heather for both of these. I didn't use the light ones. And these are our Stampin' Blends. They're alcohol-based marker and they're wonderful. They, they're so easy to color with. Uh, so I started with the wider tip because we have a wide and a narrow. And I'm just coloring in the dragonfly's body. And you really have to make sure you shut these tight because if you don't, they can dry up very quickly because they're alcohol-based. So now I'm coloring in his little body. Dragonflies, they're so pretty. They're so friendly, really. They land on you and they stay around you. They, and they don't bite. They don't do anything harmful to you. So now what I'm going to do, and it's very easy to color, you don't even have to worry about staying in the lines. Just put a swatch of color there. And then we're going to go in with our balmy blue. And see how I went out of the line a little bit? I can get my color lifter and see if I could take that off. So just go with the curves of the dragonfly. It's really fun to color with these. Okay, so now I'm going to take my dark balmy blue and I'm going to fill in and I'm using the wider brush. I'm not even worrying about staying in the lines. You don't have to. And also, um, when you color over the embossing areas, it doesn't pick up the color. 
so your silver stays really nice so you don't have to worry about oh I went over the embossing nope you don't have to worry about that and actually the embossing helps you stay in the border of the dragonfly because it's a raised edge so it does make coloring a little bit easier okay I want to make sure I color in all my white area then I'm going to go over here I think I might be getting some shadow on there I'm sorry if I am can you see that if I bring it in a little Oops, now I can't see it with all the light. It looks like, yeah, there we go. It's very relaxing to color. Okay, I think I have that all filled in. And if I don't, you know what, I can always go back and touch it up. Now I'm gonna go get my color lifter. So we also sell what's called the color lifter and you use this with the blends. So right here where I went out of the line, if I just rub this on that, it will take it off. Do you see how it lifted that right up? And over here I went out a little bit. But I am going to punch this out so you won't notice much. Oops, sorry if I shook the camera. Okay, I think I'm good. I think that's very good. Okay. I see a little area there that I'm going to go back in and touch up. Right here. Let me look at it and make sure it's all colored in is when I'm not straight over it I can't see and did you notice when I color I color with the side of the marker not the tip because you don't want to ruin your tip and it's easier to color with the side too okay now I have my dragonfly punch let me focus out again so you can see this okay remember how you unlock it tip it upside down and slide this tab and it unlocks and when I go to punch can you see I always tip it upside down because then I can see my uh, cardstock my image now I'll tell you there is a trick to doing this so let me grab a sticky note okay so I have just a little piece of sticky note here because now when I slide this in, I can't, it's not big enough, the white piece of cardstock, for me to move it around. So I put the sticky edge right there, so I can slide it in now. And I'm going to line it up carefully, because I'm not overhead of it. Oops, I want it a little... Okay, right there looks good. I'm going to set it down and give it, oh, I think it's not lining up. Let me put, bring it in closer to me. I'm sorry. doesn't want to line up. Okay, the light is just playing tricks on the, the shadows and stuff. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. No, it's got to go up a little bit. Okay, I think. And I give it a press, okay? And I just pressed it down and it pops right up. And then I can take that off. And that's scrap. Alright, so now I have my little dragonfly. So now we're ready to put the card together. Okay, we've got these two pieces adhered. We've got the words on. Now we're going to bend the wings up a little bit and we're going to put the dragonfly right there so I'm going to bring in my glue dots and you notice that when you use the alcohol base markers um, they do bleed through so that's why I always color on top of some scrap paper okay it doesn't usually get onto the scrap paper but you will see it on the back end of the cardstock you're coloring 
Okay, so I'm picking up a glue dot. And I'm going to put that one right there. And then I've got one more glue dot I'm going to use here. And that one I'm going to put there. Okay, so I have two glue dots there. And then I took my dimensionals. And I got these right here. So I have my dimensionals. And I don't want a full big one on him. I'm going to cut this one right here, okay? It's not a full one. So I'm going to put it, because I want to lift his wings up a little bit. Not too close to the glue dots, because I want those glue dots to be able to hold his body down in the center. And then the dimensional will raise his wings up a little. So I'll take the backing off of the dimensionals. And we'll position him about, you know, before I put him on, I'm just going to lay him there upside down. I'll put him in the camera so you could see him. <laughs> and before I do that, I am going to put this whole card onto this piece right here, okay? So I've got my glue because I don't want to have to mount it with the dragonfly on there. So then we'll put this here, put the glue on, okay, and if I got any glue there, pick it up, okay. Now I'm bringing it in a little closer to me so I can see, I'm going to line it up, whoops. It's hard to do with the camera in the way. Ooh, I'm sliding it around. Okay, let's see, I want it up a little. I'm bringing it in over here so I could see it away from all the shadows there. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to put more adhesive on, more liquid glue, and I'm going to put it on my balmy blue cardstock. Put more glue here, because this is pretty, it's got a lot of layers, so I want to make sure it's going to hold it on. I could even use my um, tear and tape because this has really got a lot of layers to it. So it is a little heavier, the piece. So I'm going to bring it into the camera and I'm going to lay it on. Sorry, I have to bring it out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And pull it, push it, and make sure it's in the center. That looks good almost. I think I want this pulled over here a little bit. Um, okay, it's coming. Okay, good. Give it a press down. Now, <laughs> make sure the opening is where you want it and you don't mount it upside down. Okay, so now the dragonfly is going to go over here. I'm going to press those glue dots down and then give the dimensionals a press. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, now we have one more step. I have some rhinestones right here. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those. Again, I'm bringing in my dark blends. So let's see, in this one I want one balmy blue and I use the wide tip so I'm going to take that tip and with the side you can color the rhinestones with these blends so cool so there's the balmy blue one and don't press real hard because you don't want to hurt your tip oops get these back in here and then I took my dark Where's the words on it? Highland Heather. 
with the wide brush and I colored two rhinestones. Are they in there? Okay. I don't know if you could see. Ooh, there we go. So I got two of those colors. Okay. Just give them a second to dry. And I am going to mount them right there. Whoop, let me. Okay. So let me. I want the blue one in the center. So I'll get it off with my scissors. And I think I'm going to put it about there. And then I'll take a purple one, the Highland Heather, and line it up with the blue one and put it right there. And now I'll put this one right here and I want to get it just spaced out about the same distance. That looks good. Okay, there is the card. And then for time's sake, I'm not going to stamp the inside, but then with your, when you get your third piece of white cardstock, you're just going to do the same stamping you did here. The, you're going to stamp off once with the balmy blue ink and then stamp off once with the Highland Heather. And that is Highland Heather, right? Yep. Yeah. And then you have that. And then this you will adhere into the inside of your card. So here's the one I made yesterday, and here's the one I made today. And I'll zoom out so you can see them. There we go. And there's my host code if you would like to order anything with me. And my website will be listed right down below here. You just click on that website, and from there you can shop. You can look at the catalog. So you, my contact information is there. So I hope this helps. I hope it gives you some ideas on how you can use your products if you are buying Stamping Up products. And I hope that um, you join me in this adventure. You can also join and become a member of Stamping Up by being a demonstrator. But you know what? You can do it just for the hobby, just to get the discount. It's great. That's how I started. So... Have a wonderful day, and don't forget, only four days left to celebration. Bye-bye.